Good morning, everybody. Today, my topic is about the antral follicle count and anti-malarian hormone in predicting the stimulation outcome. We all know that slowly, uh, anti-malarian hormone has taken a, a real place in our infertility workup, and now we all know the significance of it. So let's now some more discussion about it. No infertility workers is, is complete without knowing an idea about or having an idea about the ovarian reserve of patient. And we have certain markers like biochemical markers, functional markers, and genetic markers. Among them, AMH is one of the biochemical markers, and AFC is one of the functional markers, among the very other functional markers like FSH, uh, biochemical markers like FSH inhibin B and estradiol, and then there are other functional markers like ovarian volume. And then now it's coming up with the genetic markers also. So AMH and AFC, they have a similar predictive values. And so the latest uh, trend is to uh, take them together to predict the ovarian reserve, to individualize the controlled ovarian habit stimulation, to predict about the extremes of ovarian response, and to avoid cycle cancellation, and how to have an idea about the chance of live birth. Taking enteral follicle count as first, what we measure are small round oval and transonic follicles with diameter two to 10 millimeter. These are small enteral follicles up to two to six millimeter. They basically represent the endocrine reserve in our subfertile population, and they have a higher correlation with age. Whereas in PCOS, having a high heterogeneous cohort, we are bigger enteral follicles represent the endocrine reserve as smaller are under the premature arrest. Although the development potential of oocytes are normal. So with patient less than 37 year, studies have shown that there is a decline of 4.8% in the AFC, but as patient uh, ages above 37 years, the decline speeds up by 11%. The normal values, what we measure through our latest ELISA techniques in the nanogram, and per liter or in the picomole per liter range. And the values are between 2.2 to 6.8 nanogram per liter or 15.8 to 48.5 picomole per liter in the normal range. And 0.3 to 2.2 is considered in the nanogram range is considered to be low. In uh, picomole, it's 2.2 to 15.7. And with more than 6.8 nanogram per liter, it's considered to be a high range and in picomole it is 48.5. What role do AMH is, has to play? It's a dimeric glycoprotein and its expression is starts in females during puberty by the ovary. It has a role in initial recruitment and selection of dominant follicle. The expression is strongest in granulosa cells of pre-antral and small antral follicles less than four millimeter. And as the follicle grows, more than eight millimeter, the AMH expression starts disappearing. So basically it has a role in regulation of recruitment, preventing depletion of all of primordial follicle pool at once. Here we're going to show it by, as from primordial follicle to small preantral and to large preantral to antral stage, and then antral 2.7 millimeter to 8.12 millimeter to pre-ovulatory stage is a growth of follicle precedes. The AMH has a two inhibitory effect, one at from primordial to small antral, poly, antral pre antral follicle, and then at the level of FSH action. So what happens when there is AMH, no AMH or AMH starts declining? As per in vivo and in vitro experiments, enhanced transition from prime primordial to growing follicle pool, and early exhaustion of primordial follicles, and that's how the, that's because the follicles become more sensitive to FSH. About AMH, a very good thing is that it can be estimated at any time of menstrual cycle. There is minimal intracycle or intercycle variability. It is mostly unmodified under the effect of gonadotropins, short-term oral contraceptions, or pregnancy. Studies have shown that AMH decreases in patients who are smoking, having alcohol, there is some racial variations also, and in non-obese, non-PCOS obese women. 
so uh, we have to uh, consider these small things also in mind one, once we are uh, looking into the amh of patient as we all know that we are sometimes come across with variable reports or sometimes we see a discrepancies in the reports of the patient from one lab to another or over the years or over the uh, uh, span of some months or years also Whereas in PCOS, because there is a more enteral follicle uh, pool is there, so more secretion from the granulosa cells, and AMH level positively correlates with 2 to 5 millimeter size follicles. Now, about AMH in predicting the ovarian response to controlled ovarian hyperstimulation, it is definitely better than age follicle stimulating hormone inhibin B and estradiol. Although there are studies which have shown that during controlled ovarian hyperstimulation, AMH levels sometimes decreases and so they are better not to be measured during uh, once a patient is having treatment, but some months or day prior to it is always better. Now AMH and AFC and the prediction on quantitative ovarian response. There has been uh, shown uh, by studies that there is a strong and positive correlation between a basal AMH and number of retrieved oocytes. High AMH on day 3 means higher number of oocytes. And there are studies which have shown by comparing two groups where the AMH is higher by 2.5 times and they have turned out to be that there is, uh, they, they, can, they could see a difference of more than 11 oocytes. So higher AMH and higher number of oocytes. All studies have found a significant correlation between AMH and AFC, but very few have compared the performance of markers in predicting the oocyte number. Some studies have reported that antimalarian hormone is better than enteral follicle count, and some have reported that enteral follicle count is better. And then there are studies which have reported a similar performance of both. There has been a recent meta-analysis by Broetel in 2008, which included 13 studies on AMH and 17 studies on enteral follicle count. Because all the studies are over the span from 2002 to 2011. So that is all we have. Prediction of poor response and cycle cancellation. We all know we have a variable poor responders from 2 to 30 <coughs> percent in our infertile population. More than half of the studies shows that AMH has a specificity of 85% and sensitivity of 75%. La Marca et al. 2007 has shown that a single AMH has resulted in a specificity of 93% and sensitivity of 80%. So it comes in handy to counsel our patient when the AMH titer is 1.2 nanogram per liter or less where we can definitely tell the patient that you have a chance of less than four oocytes. They can have more than more number also. Sometimes it happens, but normally, averagely, the studies have shown that uh, once a patient is having a titer of 1.2 nanogram or one liter, you expect less than four or less than four oocytes. With enteral follicle count, as we know, there is intercycle variability, but waiting for a cycle with better AFC does not improve the ovarian restimulation or oocyte retrieval. Now prediction of hyperresponse or ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. This systematic reviews and meta-analysis involving nine studies on AMH and five studies on AFC have reported AMH to have a sensitivity of 82%, a specificity of 76%, and enteral follicle count to have a sensitivity of 82%, and a specificity of 80%, and there has been no statistical difference between AMH and AFC. There is an abnormal test ratio, and that is AMH up to 14%, and annual follicle count up to 16%. <coughs> so when we are treating patients with hyper we are expecting a high AMH, FSH, FSH dose regimes has to be mild and patient friendly and they need to be individualized based on the ovarian reserve testing. The reported cutoff for AMH is 3.5 nanogram per liter. And when we are seeing AFC more than 14, definitely we need to adjust the gonadotropins also. So it really comes in handy once we are seeing a patient with a high, we are expecting 
a high AFC and side by side we are having a patient, we are uh, auditing that patient and AMH also. So if we are getting this kind of results with both AMH and AFC together we can uh, put that patient in a high risk category and we can individualize our protocol right from the beginning or after we have taken all the measures like if we want to go ahead with the drilling or something whatever would we would like to uh, take the ovaries under control and to have a mild stimulation so that the patient should not land up in hyperstimulation. Now about the prediction of qualitative response. There has been difference in opinion regarding AMH and oocyte quality and studies of AMH in follicular fluid have shown that it positively correlates with early enteral follicle on day 3, growing follicles and oocytes retrieved. So there have been studies which have measured the follicular fluid AMH and if they have found out that if there is a high follicular fluid AMH, there are definitely more chance of implantation, clinical pregnancy and ongoing pregnancies. So AMH can be a factor in a selection of oocyte. Uh, about the oocyte quality and enteral follicle count, with enteral follicle count, it is interesting that once the enteral follicle count is in the lower range, the pregnancy rate increases with increasing enteral follicles. But now, as the, uh, we are going towards a higher side of enteral follicle, there has not to be shown any improvement in the prognosis with increasing enteral follicle count. The recent meta-analysis and studies suggest that AFC cannot be used to predict oocyte quality and embryo quality. Now about those patients who are on the verge of declining fertility, AMH is a better indicator as AMH level changes at 3 year interval in a young normal ovulatory woman. At every 3 year interval the AMH levels are going to change but there is no such change with inhibin B, FSH or estradiol and then there is intercycle variability also with inhibin B, FSH and estradiol. So AMH level starts changing very early in the young women life whereas FSH, B, FSH, inhibin B and estradiol changes only at the later stage once she is going to be on the verge of menopause. AMH is an early predictor of fertility loss also. To predict fertility loss in childhood cancer survivors, studies have shown that there is loss of primary follicles, there is increased FSH which is supported by the fact that there is increased FSH, decreased ovarian volume, decreased AMH and is decreased small enteral follicles also. So all these com combine, uh, in a combined way tell us that AMH can be a, f a good uh, predictor for uh, diagnosing a fertility loss in early childhood cancer survivors. Now to rationalize the program of ovulation induction we know that AMH level decrease in poor responders. Where is a normal responder and hyper responders? We can uh, uh, modulate our protocols as for conventional as well as mild ovarian stimulation, the AMH level correlates well. For enteral follicle count, where the enteral follicles are less than 3 millimeter or diameter with more than 6 millimeter, in the down regulated cycle, they, they need a regular vigilant workup. So enteral, I think I can go ahead. So I was going slowly also. Uh, we have to start the next session in time. So if the other speakers haven't turned up, then we will start the next session in time. OK, OK, fine. So I was going slowly because of this thing only, but I think I have only two, three slides left. So on the day of down regulation, enteral follicle count, if the follicles, those who are, those follicles who are less than three millimeter in size, they have a significant poor quality of sites due to defective early folliculogenesis. And in these patients, the duration of therapy is longer as the small follicles are not gonadotropin dependent and granulosa cells are less. And hence response to controlled ovarian hyperstimulation is poor in such follicles. And where the follicle is more than six millimeter, again, we have to be a very vigilant as these are the follicles which are towards the accelerated growth. And we have to adjust the gonadotropins also and need frequent follicular assessments also. So significance of normal A and what is the significance of normal AMH? Before IVF with patients having normal AMH, again we have to be a little uh, vigilant about the risk of excessive response and ovarian hyperstimulation. So individualization of treatment and low starting of FSH with antagonist is a preferable choice. So AMH is a proven marker for ovarian responsiveness and aging. An AMH level but AMH level should not be used to exclude couples from IVF 
as chances of false positive results are there that is 10 to 20 percent this it has a better role in counseling regarding the reduced chance of success and AMH is not an adequate marker for embryo quality also with the enteral follicle count it is the best single and most sensitive predictor of ovarian response to stimulation in ART but no IVF cycle should be cancelled on the basis of AFC alone so they should be uh, always keep in mind together together they can help us in predicting our response towards ovarian stimulation thank you